Hello again and welcome back. Hello everyone. To episode number 30. Yes, and a brand new year. Oh yes. Brand new the year. last one was New Year's Eve, wasn't it? Absolutely, it was. Yes. On uh, last Thursday, so with New Year's Eve. So welcome back, 2021. First episode of the year. That's right. And uh, you're not quite ready yet today. I think you're still preparing. You said you're still preparing something. Oh, I'm always so. preparing something. Anyway, let's give it a few minutes. A few people coming online, I can see. Let's get quite a few. Tony, welcome back. And... Notland dude. Okay, welcome everyone. Hello. We've got quite a few of you, so we've got a very busy episode today. We have. We've got a, a bit to talk about. We've got a few things to show. We're gonna do a, a tutorial with some paints there. Yes, we will do. We're gonna bit of a bit of guessing in the front here. Yep. We're gonna talk about the Belladrone. Yep. We've got something hasn't been right yet, but it's broken already. Ah, it's not broken. It's, it's, it's all good. construction. Yes. So the Belladrone will come later. We've got some model kits. And Stop. model kits, yes. So a lot of things happening today. So First thing first, mm -hmm. should we start with this? All right, so we'll get our regular guessing game with the car, but we're also doing brand new year, guessing game with the paint colors. So we've got a range of SMS paints here, and we thought it'd be interesting to see if anyone could actually guess the names of these particular colors. So we have a brand new gigantic paint rack for SMS paints installed, which is That's great. Right. Looking yes. really, really good. Yes. And. Um, as we're going through all the different paints yesterday, yes. we thought, all right, let's pick some that look, you know, some yellows, yes. and see if any one of you can guess the different names of these uh, of these paints. Yep. So, so they're different but same. So same but different. There is like variation in some. There's yeah. probably one in the middle there that's a bit different to the others, but there's uh, six paints, and yep. I think five of them are extremely similar. Yes. So very good. Let's see if uh, the guess can be can start yep uh, and the car obviously yeah as always right. so there. what is the maker of the car yeah the model of the car and the color and the color absolutely yes very good so Tony's already suggested Inca gold Inca gold I don't think there is an no, Inca gold we, don't, we didn't bring any gold no, there's no metallics here at all yes yeah, no metallic actual yellow that's it yes absolutely yes. so as you guys start thinking about this, I guess we should um, show a few of the new Asagawa kit that we just received. Yes. So, we've got... Um... It's a big range actually, very interesting. We've got some cars, some motorbikes, some planes. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. uh, they cover a bit of everything in there. And subjects. a bit of everything, yeah. Very good variety. So, we've got this uh, classic uh, Lamborghini Miura. So, Hasegawa have released the Miura in quite a few different versions. Yes. So they've, they've had this in the basic kit. They've had versions with resin figures included. And then they've had the previous one had the photo wedge grills, which would have had all these super fine um, uh, louvers, which are yep. over the lights and also around the back of the, the door. Well, this is the uh, the special uh, gold um, version. Version, yeah. And yep. the kit itself is molded in a gold color. Wow. So. But all in all, it's, it's the same great kit from all the other ones that have come before, except this one comes in gold. But it's, it's an iconic car. Definitely. I mean, it, it's quite unique in its shape, and um, I think it looks really good. So that's one Very of the nice. cars. Uh, there's, a, there's a few rally cars and stuff that came out as well. Definitely. And bikes. That's, and that's bike. a very nice, interesting bike. Yeah, so this is the uh, R75 um, slash 5. So it's one of the earlier kits. It hasn't been around for a while. Yeah. But it's really interesting. It's an unusual scale. I'd say this is one tenth scale. So it'll fit in with a one ninth type yeah. bike, um, bike range, uh, yeah. selection. Or you know, if you do most of the one twelfth scale ones, it'll look good there too. It'll just be a bigger, bigger version. It'll be a very detailed kit by the look of it. There's yes. quite a bit of chrome in there. Yeah, a lot of chrome. So it's going to be, it'll be quite nice pretty clean. It's got that real sort of um, uh, 60s, 70s look. Okay, then we've got a couple of ships. It's a bit special. This is a brand new kit. So this is the Japanese um, light cruiser, the Noshiro, which was at the uh, 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 the Battle of Light, which I think is around the Philippines. Um, thick box, lots okay. of bits in size. Yes. Again, and so very this detailed. is a yeah, and a full hull type model too. Right. So you got that one. And then we have another one. Yeah, this is the Yamato. So this is celebrating an 80 year um, anniversary of yeah. its launch. So Yamada is always really popular. Uh, this particular one is in 1 to 450 scale, which is a bit unusual. It's, it's a very scale again. It's yeah. very Hasegawa type scale, but I guess if you collect these and enjoy building them, then it'll look okay. Definitely. It'll look great. Okay, 
Okay, so we've got the Yamato. And then we've got a couple of Cyclo kits too. So, it's great that the Macross range is starting to become a bit more Definitely. available now too. So, we've got the, uh, the VF25 the Messiah. It's got this big, huge, um, uh, looks like a, a radar type uh, A-waxing across the top there. It's got the arm to come out. And then there's also the Draken Mark III. So, actually, I should have grabbed the other Draken too, because we've got yes. an actual Draken, which right. is in a red colour, yep. with a picture of the dragon on the bottom of it, which is in 30 second scale, which is really nice. So, there's probably about eight different kits we have in store from yeah. the uh, um, across range now, which is also still known as, uh, what was it? Was it Battletech, I think? That we saw it on right. the. Yeah, we had a different name for the, uh, the series when it went to the States. So, yeah. So, a couple of good kits there. Big range coming in from Masigao. We also received some more condoms, I think, this week, from memory. Yes. Some so, big kits as well. That was probably yes. late last week, actually. It was. So, we showed a so, few of the things that came in. So, the MGEX, they came in right. with all the yeah. lights. Yep. Um, we've still got one of the PGs up there. So, we've got the red, red frame Astray. Um, there's uh, the mega size um, Unicorn, yes. which is the 48 scale one. Uh, quite a few HG kits. Uh, and a restock of some RG kits as well. Really good. Hmm. Very good. So meanwhile, we have a guest on the car, which is a Dodge Silver. I think the color is very close, but the make is uh, definitely not there, really. What was the make? Dodge Silver. Oh. So now, try again. Let's see. Keep, keep, keep trying. So, we've got a, a baby poo yellow. Uh, I, I reckon all of them could be a baby. Could be a possible yellow. different different yeah, shades. Yeah, I guess it depends on what the baby was eating. Yes. Um, not and, quite. And, yes. But no, no, that's not the actual names on the labels. So Absolutely. yes. So. Anyway, so that's for new kids. <laughs> so we're talking about the Belgium event, and there's yes. quite a few events coming up. So first of all, tonight there is a, uh, a touring car race event at the Temple Stow race. Yeah, race that's track. really interesting. So that's a night. Nice race. race. Yep. And Brett's going to be going to that. Yeah, Brett's going to go there, and then yes. tomorrow night will be a circ down in. Um, uh, Picton, I think. Where is that? That's um. Don't, I always think it's Somerville or something. No, it's towards the peninsula, just down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that we are there, and um, there will be a on Sunday a Lilydale um, one eight Nitro and GT Electric. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna take a couple of GT Electric cars there. So that will be that will be a good event. So yep. got a few GT one eight GT. Uh, E ready to go, so it will be quite nice to see them. So you're going yeah. to the event tonight too? Uh, I'll be dropping by. Hmm. Brett will be racing the GT uh, 8 there too. Oh, cool. So we'll be, yeah. we're doing a, a demo a demo class on the GT. Car. Yeah, look good. Electric. So it'll be really good. So we're talking about the Velodrome coming up very, very soon. And there's a lot to talk about, I think. So Velodrome. So we talked about it before, but just to reinforce it, it it's a really special event. I haven't seen it happen for a number of years. It's around a bicycle velodrome, all concrete, 250 yep. meters um, around, and really massive um, banks on each yes. side. So cars are going to be trying to do their fastest. Um, I really encourage everyone to bring out a car. It's going to be a very relaxed event. Uh, we had someone asking whether or not there were going to be transponders for lap counting. There's not because it's going to be kept at maximum fun, less racy, yeah, yeah, bureaucratic type of stuff. So you just turn up on the day. I think um, they're expecting people to start uh, getting there about 11 o'clock. Yep. So this is Saturday the 23rd, so two weeks away. And then uh, uh, racing hopefully starting from 12. I guess it looks, it's going to be casual, so definitely depends on who turns up and when they turn up. And then I guess we'll just get called out for racing and then we'll go around. So since there's no lap counting equipment, which you don't really need, Correct. it'll just be a visual guide on who's gone around the fastest. And then uh, there'll be a radar gun there too, I believe. To um, see who's going the actual Factual fastest. Yes. So a speed as a, as a top speed. Yes. So looks like there's quite a few people that prepare some different cars. Yes. We shared this week a six wheeler. Yes. Which is very yeah, very interesting. That's Jeremy's. Yeah. He's Jeremy's really six good. wheeler. Yep. And um, we had someone else today coming to to purchase some foam tires. Yep. From Sweep. So lots of different cars being prepared. Yep. And you also have been preparing your car. I have been. So I've got this old short course car that uh, I've been working on over the last few years. So I thought I'd better get it to the next stage. So you can't really see much here because it's only got the rear end on it at the moment. But this is a short course, so it comes out to about here. Uh, this was made up of a couple of different cars. Uh, and the last time I had this going, we had it at a, uh, 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 just like a, a high speed run out in Altona. I think I did about 120 or 130 kilometers an hour, something like that. 
and that was with um, lesser gearing. So what I've done is I've, I've changed gearing now. Uh, I've been able to put some pinions in here. So I've got a one to one ratio at the pinion to spur now. So let me show you here. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so that's the spur gear here. Now you see the original spur gear took up all this room here. Okay, so it's tiny there. And then the pinion over here, that's actually the same spot size as this one. And that would have been half the size on the original uh, short course. So during the period of last night, I've actually been machining all this out. So this has all been dremeled out. That's much larger so that the motor could actually get closer. So you can see on this side. So I've got the motor here. It's a Castle Creations motor for 1A scale. So this is the 2200 um, uh, KV motor. It can go up to 6 cell. So what I think we'll do is I'll start off with 4 cell. And uh, if I, I get the courage, I'll put in the 6 cell and see what happens. So with this particular gear ratio, if everything goes well, well hopefully it'll be doing 160 plus. Hopefully. Wow. So you put some Mod 1 pinions, steel pinions, yes. quite coarse actually. So for to deliver that mu that amount of power, we definitely need some big, big pinions. That's right. And some really strong ones actually. Yeah, that's else. right. So initially I was using plastic um, spur, and the plastic spur was getting a little bit chopped yeah. up. Yep. Because the thing is, when these things are doing that sort of speed, the, the whole car wasn't really designed to do that. And um, there is a bit of flex that occurs here, and you might not be able to see that just moving slightly. But over here, um, if it's steel, there's a good chance you won't get yeah. that much damage. It's going to yeah. be very, very noisy, so you're going to hear it coming, but Maybe. it's not going to be stripping the gears at least. Maybe stripping something else. Maybe. Maybe, but, hopefully but, not. Yeah. So yeah. I guess there'll be quite a few nosy cars out there, because that's going to be very typical when you have this kind of high-performance car that you put coarse gears, and therefore it yes. gets a lot noisier. Yes. So, so. you know, for, for you know, just to make sure it gets around the track, because there's nothing like doing one lap and then you lose all your gears. I mean, that's no fun at all. So. No. With any luck, that's all going to be good. So it still needs a little bit of uh, refinement. It still needs a bit of Dremel work. Still need to, to cut down here because there's a little, little bit of rubbish. Um, and then I think we're ready to go. So I've just got to transfer all my gear yep. over to this one. Um, I've got a little uh, temperature sensor to telemetry receiver just to make sure the motor doesn't overheat because um, I have overgeared this with a massive spur before and it has hit 100, uh, degrees. 100 degrees easily. So, and that's what you don't Definitely. want. It is very common when you do the speed runs yes. that your motor, your equipment is um, is going to overheat. So, yeah, very good thing to do is specifically when you're trying out every couple of minutes of runtime, just stop and check the temperature of your um, equipment. Yeah, and right. um, as you get be more familiar with it, you can uh, you can perhaps stretch it to a, a bit longer, really. Yes, so yes. You never should get to your five or six minutes. Yeah, but that's generally right. Generally speaking, if you have a speed run, you can do a speed run. Really, it's going to be a few hundred meters. Really, yeah, that's much right. more than that. And then I'm still using these tires, which are the um, uh, GRP, GRP tires that yep. are they guarantee them to 180 kilometers now. 180. Yeah. Wow. So these are the carbon fiber belted ones. So if I can get up to that speed, I'll be really, really happy. If I can drive it at that speed, I'll be even happier. Even happier. Yeah, yeah. If I can keep it uh, on the track. So there's my project. So it doesn't look like much at the moment, but this is going to be very easy to put back together. Definitely. Um, and this will be ready. Hopefully, I'll have this ready for a run for not this weekend, but next weekend, just to make sure. Um, uh, it's tracking okay, and then for the following week we'll bring it out, and Definitely. it's going to be a fun evening. Absolutely. Yeah. Talking about wheels and tires, I have a bit of a selection of wheels and tires because they're quite important when you when you're doing this kind of events to have the right the right wheels yes. and tires, obviously. Yes. So um, what we have here is a bit of a selection of Sweep. Yep. Um, Sweep is a well-known manufacturer from uh, Korea. And they manufacture all different uh, racing tires, specifically belted. Yes. And belted is what you need um, in speed runs, otherwise your wheels would balloon. Yes. Uh, and it will eventually explode. When yes. you go over 100 kilometers an hour or so, the wheel will potentially uh, yep. explode, effectively. Yep. So we have a two different sizes. So that's a buggy size or yep. touring car, GT. Yep. And then we've got a Truggy 1.8 version yep. here. And again, they're belted. So... As you can see, big wheel here. So it's a lot easier getting tires to fit a lot of different RC cars now. So there's plenty of batcher type cars that can achieve really high speeds. Yes. And all you need to do is um, you can put on a set of these tires. Um, you can give it a go with the original tires. They're probably good for up to 100 kilometers now, yep. the, their stated speed. But if you're gearing it up, then you really need to get something a bit more extreme like these. And then we have also a foam option again from Sweep on 1.8. Uh, buggy rims. Yep. You can see the sweep logo here. 
And this could be also interesting. We had a customer today um, who said he tried us to about 110 kilometers an hour. Yes. And um, yeah, they were pretty good. So yeah. So sh foam tires are, um, they've got that advantage because they're, they're very, very light. So you don't have a lot of um, unsprung weight. Um, they're glued very well. So there's little chance of them um, coming off the actual wheel. Um, and they give you a very consistent um, yep. traction. Definitely. So uh, these are a few options here for tires suited for the velodrome and as we're doing this we also prepare something else here yes That's this, is, this is a bit special so last week we showed you the box of this car it's now ready to go so this is the 1.8 electric truggy from hot bodies yes so this was built by joe yep uh within probably two days actually super quick yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for doing that for us um, so we can actually see what it looks like. Yes. Uh, brand new car arrived just last week. Yeah. Uh, quite a few upgrades. But what we, as we are in topic of uh, velodrome, we thought trying to put different wheels on. So imagine, and, uh, imagine something like this. Can you see the size of the rear tires compared to the front tires? I mean, this just looks awesome. So we thought this could be a new project, perhaps. Look at the width of the rears. And these wheels here are the same as the. This one from Sweet, but they are a bit sleek, so they'll be ultra grippy. Yes. So we'll need some traction compound perhaps as well. It. You feel it now. That's uh, very, very sticky. So that's a bit of a machine. So that's a new project that we have uh, in mind, actually. We just mm. uh, thought about it just before. Also because we have a very nice body to put on it. Look at this. So that's a, that's a kind of a beetle body, and we, we yeah, figure yeah, out the fits. Trim it down a bit. Virtually perfect. It could be a very nice kind of project. Really, really rat roddy. Yeah, very much so. So this kind of truggy normally they go you know, uh, up to you know for they race a 4s, but they can definitely handle 6s plus. Yes. So it could be a very good machine for uh, for the velodrome mm. or in general for uh, bashing and speed runs. Yes. So this is a new version that was released just recently, and it's really um, it's quite a few upgrades in it. That give you the opportunity of putting carbon supports on the arms to, to, to increase the stiffness on the arms or yep. the plastic ones you can choose. Yep. But generally speaking, everyone will be using uh, carbon inserts on on the on the arms. I'll show this on there. So as you can see, the wheels here. Really yeah, really that's, big. that's that's pretty chunky. That's very chunky. So, but as you see, the arms here they've got some small holes. Let's see if you can see here. Yep. Yeah, you can and, sort of see the ribbing there. Yeah, the and here all around you can put a, a carbon plate. Yep. Actually, if I flip it, it's probably better actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. That's better. So you can put your your carbon plate uh, there. So you can put it either side or only on one side. It depends how much uh, s stiffness you want to have on your uh, on your arms. Really. Mm. Um, generally speaking, it will look like a traditional, you know, electric buggy. You've got your your motor mount here. You put your ESC down on this side, and your big battery just here. So it's got these big cars that are really versatile, so it's got the clamp style uh, engine mount, so you can clamp um, a lot of the standardized sized A scale motors inside. And then it's got the fully adjustable battery tray as well, because Definitely. there's so many different shapes of battery you can get these days. So we can put shorties or we can put full size yep. full size packs, and if you remove these in full and you find a different way to strap it on, you can put a 6S or 8S battery if you decide to put a, a mega a powerhouse in here. Mega, so, that's what we want, mega. Absolutely. And otherwise, we can go back to normal. These are the traditional traggy, yeah. traggy wheels that yes. we'll probably be, be seeing on this car a lot more, yes. a lot more frequently, really. Yep. I've got a question for you guys. Yes. Regarding this one, would the amount of power this thing's putting out, would it need a wheelie bar to stop it from popping up on its rears? Uh, that's possible. Yeah, I guess it depends on the setup you put on your radio, yeah. too. So, uh, with a lot of the computer radios, you can set up. Um, uh, the launch so it's a bit like a launch control so you want to soften the throttle feel if you're going for a speed run but if you want bashing you probably want full full power Absolutely. so full power it'll be kicking up like this because the instant torque and then um, yeah it might be an idea to try to rig up a, uh, a little wheelie bar definitely so we actually have a very good question here so with different size tires should you thicken up the default the diff fluid or anything yeah, so the, the it's, it's going to have a different um, drive output. So you're going to have a bit of overdrive on the rear end yeah. like this. So what it's going to do is um, it's just going to make the center diff work yeah, really, really hard. hard. Yeah. 
So I can either leave it the way it is, uh, put in a lighter one so that um, uh, it compensates, but, but, but I mean, we'll be the gears out. will be, yes, yeah. the gears will be, be spinning really quick. really hot. So I guess, you know, if you do a speed run in this condition, just put a, the, the thickest diff floor you find, just go for it. Yes. So so, so the thicker the thicker diff floor is going to basically mean the front and the rear is going to be spinning at exactly the same revs. Yeah. It's just that the rollout is going to be yeah. different and the front end is just going to get pushed along a bit, which yeah. isn't such a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. But generally speaking, when you put a lot of power yes. and you do this kind of uh, velodrome type events, you, you normally tend to want a thicker deep fluid just to keep your gear safe because yes. they tend to overrate a lot. Yeah. There's lots of power, so yeah. that's probably what we will be doing. But yeah. So on my speed cars, I tend to put a really, really heavy oil in the front. Yeah. So it's almost like a spool. Yeah. And then um, quite a light one in the rear end um, because we want to ma try to maintain um, traction because... It may be bump around and one wheel may unload. So if the back one unloads, yes. then it'll just spin up and just, it won't spin it out. It'll just uh, release it through revs. Yeah. And then you'll have a slightly heavier one in the middle. So the middle one's always a sort of medium weight. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. I think um, also Warwick said that the body, polycarbonate body looks like a calm, more like a Carmen gear. Oh, a Carmen gear. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Well, a Carmen gear, oh, it's the same thing as, as a Beetle, isn't it? Yeah, it's not the same chassis. It's something squashed. A bit different. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've got another... Oh, Tony suggested we need a one-way bearing for the front of that truggy. Yes. One-way bearing. That'll be interesting. How about we just take the drive shafts out? You just, yes. So I think that'll probably be a real good option drive. Or, or, you get these tyres, stick them on the front. Yes. Small ones at the back. Front wheel drive. Yep. That could be good too. Drag it around. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be stable. That'll be interesting. Just keep it, just keep keep it on. It. You, as you hard as you can. You going squirrely, just keep it on. See what happens. All right, we can try all these things in a couple of weeks. Yeah. See what solution is best. I yeah. don't think this tire will fit too well at the front. The offset may not be right in the steering. Well, you, yeah, you don't need just to go steer straight. Anyway. Just go straight, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. very good. So this is for uh, velodrome, really. What else do we have? Um, do we have any question on the velodrome? Let us know. We can yeah. we can address them. But that's a bit of a range of wheels. Yes. Um, and as I said before, make sure you bring a car out because it's going to be so casual. Definitely. It'd be a real shame if everyone was to come out and just watch. Yes. But no one brings their cars, so we'll, yeah, be, we'll, right. we'll be watching five people driving their cars. So we're, we're going to be there for sure with cars. Definitely. Um, a few other people for sure. Uh, and one else, we're not too sure. So if you can, just bring a car. Doesn't matter what car it is, even if you haven't done any mods to it, just go for it. That's it. Just it's drive around fun. an oval because driving around an oval is so much fun. That that definitely. So yeah. and and also there is this legend of cars being destroyed. Yes. Which is true, but it's not true at the same time. Yes. So. Often, when you lose control, you end up in the infield, yes. not up That's in, right. on the fence. That's right. So, but there is a fence there as well, so you know it, it's a cyclone fence. Yeah, Definitely. you bounce off it. Um, the people that normally do damage are the people like me who've done massive modifications yeah. and try to push it a bit too far. So, so when you go way over the hundred kilometers an hour, what things do happen? But yes. if you have a normal car, you push your 50, 60, even seventy k's an hour. Yes. You should be reasonably fine. Yeah. If you have some good tires with decent grip. Yep. Uh, you should you should be fine, really. That's right. I mean, most of the cars that um, uh, lose their way, they tend to just spin out. That's right, because yeah. you tend to perhaps release the gas on the on the corner. You get in too too quick. You think yep. you're not gonna be able to to complete the corner. You release the gas and you transfer weight towards the front. Yes. And your car spin out like that. Yeah. It's a you know. So in the corners, keep it down always. Yeah, yeah. Get flat necker. Flat. Always. <laughs> that case, if you got, you got. That's but it. Otherwise, you should be going around. So. Yes. Uh, it's going to be a good fun event. Mm. Uh, maybe we're going to have a bit more. You're going to have your car finished by next week, hopefully. Yes, it will be finished by next week. And for sure. uh, we'll have a bit more to show you. But for now, that's all for the velodrome. Yeah. And this could be maybe the new project. Yes. Could be well, since the last project turned so out so well. TRX6, uh, white limited edition sold really quick. Yep. So this one could be the next Yes. Uh, limited edition project. We will see. So if you have any ideas, pop it down for in the comments. And we can uh, we can add to the list of mods that we may do on this one for sure. So, cool. Let's park this one then. Yeah. Let's see if there is any more gases on the cars actually. Yeah, yeah. So, any on the car? Any on the paint? Um, someone said they thought it was an Aston Martin. That's Not uh, an Aston. That is going to be the interesting part of this car actually. Uh, it's going to be really hard to guess because it, it looks like almost like a Mazda actually. Yeah, I, th I thought. Look, the rear end looks very Mazda-ish. So, but it's not a Mazda either. No. If that can help. No. So let's see if anyone can come up with uh, any other uh, any other suggestion. Um, how about the yellow? How are we going with yellow? No more yellows. No more yellow guesses. 
Uh, Tony is getting very close now. Tony is oh. guessing that he's a Ferrari. Ah, and he is a Ferrari. Yes. It's definitely on the Mazda. Yes. It's not red, but it's still a Ferrari. Yes. It's a silver Ferrari. Um, we have actually another comment up here uh, in relation of uh, um, turning the steering range down. So yes. definitely uh, it's a very, very good suggestion. There's a few yes. things you can do to your steering when you go into this uh, velodrome, so speed runs. Yes. To adapt the speed of response and yes. also the amount of throw, I guess. Yes. So I guess there's, there's two ways of looking at the steering. So yes, theoretically you don't need a lot of steering, but if you get into trouble, you may want to get back on the track where you do need steering. So perhaps exponential would help with that. Yeah. So you tone down your exponential so you've got hardly any movement Definitely. and then you have your maximum movement at full lock. So That's right. Yeah. That is a good option really. Mm. So very good. So um Yeah, actually, very good question. So yes, yep. uh, we have Aramax car stuff coming every probably three weeks, really. Yes. Um, tool sets they have the coming and going. They're very limited stock all the time. So yes, we have an order that is going to be leaving on Monday, and there are few tool sets. But what you see on their website, the full range is never quite available. But across the range, you should always find a tool set which is suitable for what you're doing, really. So. Uh, we have all of them on order and they come as they can really so give us a message on uh, maybe your Facebook or whatever is suitable for you and we can help you finding something that works for you so there will be there'll be few coming yeah for so, sure it was very popular definitely a huge range uh, of different tool sets we have setup station coming tire warmers there is a good definitely good order coming yep. in about a week time so uh, what else we have so yeah the car is definitely silver but um, I think it's actually called something different silver. It's a special silver. Funky silver. It's a funky silver. And you still don't have the model yet. It's we still don't have the model, so no. we know it's a Ferrari. Yes. So also Tony suggesting maybe blue angels, yellow. Oh, it's picked on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one here? Yeah. Uh, this one here is blue angels, yellow. That's it. So we, we should put this up. Yeah, That's okay. One is All done. Right, there's a winner. Six there's down. one. Five to go. Yep. Five to go. It's going to be a long show. Yep. <laughs> Um, and so we have a guest on the car actually. Yes. So GTC4. I, I reckon that's pretty much it, isn't it? I think that's it. We've got it. GTC4. And What's a C4? Coupe? No, sure, really. We should actually four do for four wheel drive or four wheels? Four Definitely drive, four yeah. wheels, and it's also four wheel drive. Yes. This is a four wheel drive uh, Ferrari. No, no, I don't think that is, uh, there are many four wheel drive Ferraris being made. No, there wouldn't be. So. Uh, and the color is not aluminum and it's not chrome, even though it does look very, very much the case, mm. but um, similar. So, uh, last week we introduced the Scale 75 paints. We did. Uh, brand new range for us from Spain. Very yes. interesting product. Very different uh, to many other uh, yes, products in the right. market. Yes. They have a very nice concept, really, which I guess brings everything back to the roots. It does. So, it's, um, it's an artist type. Uh, paint so they call it the artist range uh, it's got uh, there's 48 colors in the full range um, but it, it's going back to uh, simple um, uh, ideals about the colors and how yep. colors work and then also they've got really vibrant colors and very strong pigment and it's a very uh, highly concentrated paint too so you can actually stretch it out yep. uh, to a point where it's very thick like a paste definitely so it goes on like mud even yep. uh, and then you can send it all the way down to a wash um, wow. And then in between, you can also thin it down so you can airbrush it too. So what I might do is um, I've got a basic selection here. Yep. Um, and I'll give you a quick rundown on um, how just with six colors in the basic set, how you can use that to make all the different colors that you need. And it'll help you understand color theory. Yes. Um, understand how to mix a particular tone that you want. Um, yeah, I think this would be quite interesting. So we, I might just... We just recorded a video this week actually on this. We yeah, should we go did. live perhaps tomorrow night. Yeah, I think that's tomorrow. So there'll be the first video of a pretty compressive series that we have planned on uh, how to use this type of paints. Really. Yes, so. that's right. Cool. All okay. right, jump so on this I might, side. I might, I might, yep. So uh, go over here. here. All right, let's put this here. So I can see. All right, let's get that a bit. Where am I? Right here. Yeah, right there. Back, yeah. All right, so I've got my paints here. Very gorgeous paints too, if you see them in person. Yes, so they're, they're very silky in their feel. All right, so I'm just going to get my stuff over here. So I've got a bit of blotting paper for a brush. Got my brush. Got my water. Okay, so these are the six different colors that you get in your um, 
uh, basic set. They do make quite a few different sets. So they've got a, a blue tone set, a flesh set, a uh, red set, grey, blues and, and others, and browns. But this particular one is, I think if you want to try them, this is the best colour combination to start with. Uh, so you've got your black, your white, so they're your tonal colours. Black being your absolute shadow, white being your absolute highlight. And then you've got your blue, your red, your yellow, and then there's also a brown, which is a burnt sienna, sienna umber. So they also use the names of a lot of the, um, the pigments, traditional pigments as well. So I'm just going to pop them over here. Um, I'll give you a quick demonstration of doing a colour wheel. So it, it's how you um, uh, mix the colours to get um, the basic tones that you need. So let's just start it off here. So as I squeeze them out, you're probably going to see how thick it comes out. So it's, it's very pasty. So there's the blue, we'll do the red, and then we've got the yellow to go. If I may add to you while you're doing that BJ, yes. I believe that each colour can also have a certain definition or representation, such as blue being calm and professional, red can have like fi uh, fire and excitement and passion in a way, and oh, yes. can be very royal or legal? Yes, yes. So, yeah, there's, there's obviously um, uh, different um, feelings that you can get with, with colour and how it influences work. So, you know, blue being known as a very cold colour, and then you've got your red, uh, which is uh, your warm colour. So I'm just going to spread this paint around. So what I've done here is, I've got, this is going to be the uh, the pure blue, in between the red and the blue is going to be even parts of each colour, and then it's going to be staggered along. So, here we go again, so I'm just adding little bits. So there's going to be more of the particular uh, pigment, uh, where the pigment, pigment or the paint originates. <clears throat> so as you can see here, this will be like three quarters red, 50% red, and then 25% red there, and then we'll finalize that up, just clean this up a bit with my water, okay we'll do that with the yellow. Alright so this is the three quarters yellow, 50% yellow, 25%. Okay. Now what we've got is, uh, that's the primary colours of blue, red and yellow. Now when we mix them equal parts, we're going to be getting our secondary colours. Okay, so if we do yellow and red, what are we going to get? We get orange. Okay, so that's probably need a little bit more yellow there. Alright, so you've got orange there, and then <clears throat> yellow and blue together gives you green. So what does blue and red give you? So you mix those up, you got purple there. Okay, so there are our secondary colours. So secondaries is blue and yellow is giving you green, your red and your yellow is giving you orange, and then your blue and your red is giving you um, the purple. So you've got your in-between colors now and they're going to be our tertiary colors. Okay, so if we mix over here, let's clear off that. Here you're going to get yellow-orange. do that. There we go. Okay, so as I'm creating these colors, they're different tones to give you all the colors you need in between. So over here I'm doing this. This is your yellow green. Let's clean that out, still got a bit of pigment in there. Alright, so over here is going to be your, your blue green. And then we've got over here, so we've got blue, blue, purple. And 
and your red purple. So that probably needs a touch more. Okay, so there you can see that's your basic color wheel. Now that all of this was achieved with just three different colors, your three primaries. Now with your three primaries is also going to be if you do equal parts of each primary, what color do you get there? So it's probably a color that no one really expects. Alright, so that should be about even. Okay, so if we mix them all up. Okay, so there you go. Lo and behold, you get brown. Okay, so you got brown there. So you've got all these different colors. You get your blues into your purple, into your red, into your orange, into your yellow, and then into your various greens. And you also got brown tone as well. So just with three colors, you got all of that already. Now, they also give you this uh, burnt um, sienna umber, which is a brown tone. So this one's a little bit different to the primary mixed together. This is actually deeper and it's much earthier. So with this one, you can use this. So you can compare it just there, it's much darker. You can use this to add earthy tones to any one of these. So if you need um, a, a, a dirty type of um, color or you're mixing up military type greens, just a touch of this with some green here. Oh, I may not have enough there, but you just see it, it's coming out as a olive green. Okay, the other thing you can do is by mixing a touch of brown, so I've got a touch of brown there, mix it with some orange. Um, and actually I was going to use some white, which I haven't put out yet. Okay, so let's put out some black and white. These are your tonal colors. And again with your tonal colors, you add these to any one of your colors in the color wheel, and you can get your lighter tones, and you can get your darker tones. And I'm mixing all these just with some water. That's all you need with these for brush painting. For airbrushing, there is a specific thinner that you can get for them, um, which will uh, have a flow improver already added. And there you go, right there. So that's your basic flesh tone. So out of all these six colors, you've already got pretty much every color you need. So you your white, Add a touch of yellow to it. You've got your super light colored yellow. And if you add, add a touch of black, you don't need very much. And then you add a bit of red. You got a very, very dark red. Okay, so that's my really quick um, um, tutorial on the scale 75 paints. So this color theory will work with any paint but with these particular colors because they're, they're true uh, primary pigment um, that's the only way you're going to get this brown when you mix it between it and that's how you get this pure um, color wheel so there you go now, hopefully uh, you get a better idea of um, what you can do with the paints and how you can learn to to mix the paints to suit your um, particular um, uh, situation it's a great way of understanding uh, how color works because th there's going to be a, a time when you want to uh, mix a color to match something or you want different tones so for instance when you're doing a tank quite often you want highlights and then there's going to be worn marks and then there's going to be uh, sun bleached areas yeah. and that's where you want those subtle differences it's just added a little bit of a different color and that's right and uh, yeah that. yeah so you can see the versatility just of these particular paints you'll notice that um, they come in these uh, fairly large tubes so there's a lot to um, uh, to use. They're actually very economical uh, yes. when you use them. They'll last a very long time. You only need the smallest amount and they thin down incredibly well with water Absolutely. for brush painting. So lots of pigment actually in yes. here. Like in incredibly there. dense. So the color is very dense too. So you'll see, just um, watch the, um, the tutorial video which will go live tomorrow and it'll show me yep. uh, using the yellow too because yellow is one of those pigments no matter what brand, it's very yep. hard to cover anything. But you'll see the, um, uh, the density of the, uh, the pigment within it 
uh, where I do a little bit of a, a sample painting on a, a plastic piece. Very, very interesting. Yeah, really good stuff. Good, so stay tuned hmm. for a little bit more tutorials on this product. Yes. So they have 48 colors overall in their range, isn't That's it? That's right. And uh, the great thing is um, the 48 colors, so the 48 colors will be able to do everything. So what you, what you notice is, yes, you can mix every single color out of the basic set, and it's a very good um, educational yeah. um, uh, setup. It's great to start off with, so if, if you're a beginner and you want to get into this style of painting, that's the best at the start with. And then you can easily complement it with anything else. So if Definitely. you do a lot of military with greens, you can get a, um, uh, a mid-green type yep. of colour. There's also a variety of flesh colours too, so Definitely. they're pre-mixed. Um, some blues, that's some right. blue so greys. Yeah, yep. a full, full um, spectrum of colours. So pre-mixed ones, so you'll never need, look, no one will ever need even more than 48 of those colours. Yep. So with that, um, you just complement it with, um, say, some silvers from a different brand. But um, if you do figures, then it's quite um, um, common these days for people to do non-metallic yep. metals, yep. which is the old style um, uh, the fine artists would do, because when you're painting on a canvas, there's no metallic paints as such, and they'll, they'll influence Definitely. Uh, the actual reflections that way. And they look a little bit more natural, but it takes a lot more skill. Definitely. So either but way, whichever way you want to do it. Definitely a, a way to start to understand the basics. Yes. And then after that, you can probably go and buy pre-made stuff yes but at least you have an understanding on how you get to different colors in the case yes, you don't have it for sure so that's a really good way to understand the basic on on um, on the subject and effectively this brings us back to this where you see that you have yes. six different yellows yes which you also can achieve by having a yellow and complementing with yes different different colors to achieve similar similar results that's right yes so th these are really good they're, they're really convenient um, but if, if you're stuck without a particular tone then at least you'll be able to know how to make the definitely, tone. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, there's a, for the people on Facebook, um, yes. <clears throat> there's a conversation between Warwick and Kaiju on yep. YouTube about yes. um, using these paints as a airbrush. Um, yes. The Kaiju was asking, they weren't entirely sure of the, uh, the amount to use to get the right consistency. Yes. So uh, do you have a, well, Warwick uh, put a recommendation in and I'm guessing you'd have the same. We having a conversation just the other day of this uh, um, thickness of the milk. Yes, that's right. So, I mean, this, I've always used the analogy of yeah. milk. Okay, so milk doesn't really make sense to some people. So I think it's easy for most people to understand that milk is going to be thicker than thinner or water. Yeah. Okay, so you, you need it to be a point where it's thin enough um, and then so that it flows easily through your, your tooling and your airbrush. Yeah. But you don't want it so thick that it's um, going to um, clog the airbrush. Now that, that takes a bit of... Um, uh, feel and I think yeah. I, yeah so I think that that's going to take a, a, a another tutorial so I'll, I'll go through all these um, and I'll show you how I work out the, the thinning ratio um, of particular um, paints so I find that with particular pigments yeah you mix it differently as well um, so it comes with a feel and I'll try to teach you how I get that feel and give you a, a rough point of um, um, uh, starting, start, really. yeah, starting, starting point. point. Yeah. I guess when you start spraying, you will have a feel that you know yes. if the paint is quite now ready. Yes. And you need to add a little bit more. That's perhaps. right. So the good thing about these particular paints is because they're so pigment heavy, yeah. that even if you overdo it, what you, what you're going to find is if it's over thinned, it's just going to spray beautifully. It's just not going to have very good coverage. Coverage. Okay. So you can still achieve what you're needing to do, but you may need multiples on multiple coats. Definitely. And then basically, once you realize that's happening, you can add a little bit more pigment. Definitely to a point where it's still flowing very nicely yep. through the airbrush, and then that's it. So I just grabbed this. This is the thinner, which is designed for airbrushing for yeah, scale, scale 75. Because uh, it's got uh, a flow improver already mixed into it, um, and also a retarder, because acrylic paints tend to dry very quickly, yeah. and, uh, particularly when they're under pressure. Um, so once you mix this into it, it'll airbrush fine. So this is a smaller bottle. There's also so this particular bottle. one, yeah. How many size something? is this one? Uh, sixty mil. Sixty. And then there's a two hundred fifty mil available as well. So yeah, that's the best way to um, uh, get it into the airbrush. Uh, I think the best way is uh, we'll have another tutorial video. Well, but yeah, it, it's got a lot of feel. I think a lot of paints, even other brands, when people give um, particular um, ratios, yeah, it's very hard to replicate. Because everyone's airbrush is going to be slightly different. You know, 0.3 is not the same 0.3 that's in various brands. Correct. It'll be slightly different. 
and then also needles are polished at a different point as well. And because everyone uses a slightly different ear pressure, that's and right. the gauges may not be the same. So I think that's an important aspect, the, the pressure. So I guess once you set your compressor to a pressure, yes, and and for some reason the paint doesn't come out, don't increase the pressure because that's chances are that it's going to dry the paint in your in your airbrush and it's yes. going to damage the airbrush effectively. Yes. So yeah. if it's not coming out, start thinning the paint before increasing the pressure. That's as right. a general rule. So yes. uh, not always the case, but you know, twenty psi. Around that point is a good starting point, yep. and then work on the paint before um, before cranking up the the compressor. Yeah, because uh, once the paint is drying in in the in the airbrush, it's very hard to clean. It is. That's right. So, yeah, very good. So I can see a bit conversation going here. So okay, yes. excellent. So, um, very good. So that's all for uh, scale seventy five yes. today. And uh, don't forget to jump on uh, YouTube tomorrow night for uh, for a very extensive. Uh, tutorial actually yes uh, it's about half an, half an hour long mm. on uh, on this paint so yeah very good so shall we shall we reveal the different colors should we everyone's given up have they I, I don't see much on this I think it's gonna be really hard oh is it okay all right so since we're talking about paints um, I guess all right. so all right so this one we had was the um, uh, blue angels yellow yes this one here school blush School bus yellow. This one is a RLM German uh, gelb. So that'll be the aircraft type. Yes. And then you got a zinc chromate yellow. Citronella. Citronella. And then we've got train yellow. That's it. And that's your. Actually, let's see if we put them here so you can actually probably see a lot I'll better. Get closer. A lot better the colors. Here we go, and here's the full range of yellows that are in the range of um, SMS. Yep. Very interesting. So you get a shade of yellow for virtually any application. And yes. then again, you can intermix them. That's right. If you do so, need, so you can get half tones here? Yes, you yes. can go half and half. So yep. again, understanding the basic theory of the mixing is very important. So you know what happens when you go, when you put these two together or then two other ones together. So you yes. can get really close to what you we're trying to achieve really yes very good all okay. right so i think we have the car guest are the cars all done i think is uh very much so i think the the color um it's color gonna be might be a bit tricky but a it is tricky. a silver definitely is a silver yes so i think we should have a good look at this because i quite like this one this one's got the uh, the moon roof on it i think so so we've got yeah. two different ones actually we've got a red version as well so this week we received uh five different uh, configuration of uh, of this car actually, which is uh, yeah, which are really, really nice. So it's a red one there. Uh, that's my favorite. Right. Oh, it's a very classic, isn't it? With, the, with the black wheels. So let's jump on the side camera so you can have a good look at this one. So that's a 118 scale again, as usual, from BBR from Italy. Mm. Uh, they are very limited edition. This is 11 of 32, yep. specifically this model. Uh, they've done five different variations uh, between different colors and with or without um, the uh, sunroof. Yes, which is uh, which is quite nice actually. So, and uh, this um, this is silver. I think they call it um, is it iron silver. Iron silver. Um, and as you see, it's, it's really really nice. A couple of um, nice details on the side here. You see the uh, the air intake. Yeah, I like the, the shark gills. It's very detailed, so it's a, I think it's a photo edge. It's very fine. Mm. Probably hard to see. Let's see if we can. You can see it really, really sharp. But one aspect of this, which is quite nice, let's see if you can do, get it. So you can see through the sunroof and see. You uh, can pick up all the fine details, can't you? A lot of that would be missed normally with a solid roof. So you can actually see the interiors. You can see all the heating and cooling. Uh, in the center part of the of the seats is obviously four seater. This one, you have all the cooling, the gear, um, all the controls there. A lot of the contrast on the uh, the the red, the red interiors. Yep. Definitely, you can see here. Very nice, very nice. So the detail. wheels are quite nice too. They got the highlighted parts, haven't they? Yes. So it's like it's like a it's gunmetal base color with all the edges which have been highlighted in, in, a, in a chrome, in yeah. chrome silver. Yeah. Uh, here's your rear end. So that's a bit where I thought it looked a bit mesmerish. It's a bit of a Mazda rear end. Yeah, it's got that. I mean, it's got that traditional, the, the round lights. So I guess, well, Mazda probably pinched that from Ferrari to begin with. 
but some of the lines here look a little bit mesmerish because I guess it's unusual to see this style fastback yeah. hatch from Definitely. Ferrari. We've got some last minute guesses too. Yes. Uh, on the silver. Warwick's being a bit cheeky with the. Yeah, speech. Warwick silver. It's a Warwick silver. Warwick silver? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> so, and you your front hand here. And we've got uh, Ken guessing it's. Uh, well, he said it should be Argento Never Green silver. Oh, uh, really? I'm pretty sure this one was uh, a something nearer Ar Argento Ferro, which Ferro, is uh, which yeah. means a uh, kind of you know uh, metal iron. iron. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So anyhow, this is uh, this just arrived uh, this week. And because since go. we're talking about colors, they're all different kinds of silvers as well, aren't they? They're all different kind of silvers. Yes. yes. So and that's a similar same car and a different. Different configurations, different wheels. So we've got black shiny wheels. Yep. It's very uh, bright red. Nice bright red. Uh, you've got your sunroof, and the interiors are kind of uh, light brown. So the Ferrari reds um, lightened up over um, time. It's changed. So so they, they initially changed the red to suit uh, television coverage. Yes. They changed it brighter to, to right. make it stand out more, more on TV in F1 racing. And um, I think it works really well. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, and uh, I guess this is it for today. Really, that's uh, mm. that's our range of 118 scale resin cars. Yes. So, if you're not familiar with the difference between resin and diecast, we actually have a uh, a video on our YouTube channel, giving a bit of an explanation on on the difference between a a resin model, which is yes. like this, yep. uh, where the and doors are not opening and and there's right. no much um, dynamic uh, movement in the car, but there's a lot more detail. Yes. Compared to a Probably cheaper sometimes diecast, uh, diecast model. Really. Yeah. Well, I guess with a diecast model, people tend to want to open them, so they're definitely. simplified to a point, so they got a lot of strength. Definitely, definitely. Hmm. So, very good. Hmm. So let's see if there is any more questions. Otherwise, I think we are towards the end today again. Yes. Well, I've got a question for you. Guys, yes. Yeah. For myself, um, if uh, between resin and um, diecast metal. Yep. Would you say that usually the diecast metal is more targeted towards more the muscle classic cars? No exclusively but mostly so compared to resin or it's usually an equal balance between oh well we're, see, we're seeing die cast metal in um uh, ferraris as well yeah so i think it's more of a mass market whereas die cast metal um resin um because it needs a little bit more care in um handling mm. yeah um and also the finer detail in it i think that's sort of aimed at the the upper um market and so, and hence that, that's why they have so much extra detail they put into them. And, and I guess the benefit of the resin is you can do a lot of variation of, of the same car. Yes. In a sense of different colors, different wheels. Yes. Um, what you probably see on, on, this, on these models is that you have the same car with five, six different colors, yes. but also different interiors, yes. different wheels, different uh, brake calipers, um, yes. all sorts of different details, which, which makes it really interesting and, and it can be really customized to well, that's right. It's a bit more bespoke, isn't you, it? You because like, really. even though the resin gives you more detail, the, the production of resin uh, is different to diecast metal because diecast metal, your tooling is much more expensive. It's CNC machined um, tooling designed to pump out lots Definitely. of um, models. Now with um, resin, it, it's pretty much a hand build. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it'll be a soft rubber or silicon mold, and um, it's very time. Um, intensive so you gotta pour in the resin and then the resin is a set so you can't really Definitely. produce as many Definitely. so hence the price goes up and it's much more of a craftsman yeah. type yeah. of build yeah. because everything yeah. needs to be sanded back and everything has a very nice Definitely. finish Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, very good excellent okay then so mm. we'll be back next Friday again we will be yep so we're back to our regular time slot 2 p.m. every Friday yes and uh, so make sure you follow us throughout the week on our social media and comment comments on the different posts if you want to see yep. anything particular on the live we're happy to try a few tutorials stuff we've done today yeah sure be, be more interactive yep um and uh uh yeah let us know what you'd like to see hmm. all right then yeah so everyone have a good weekend yeah thanks for joining us again thank so, you again for joining us and see you next week see you next time bye bye